I'm coming to you from Punta del Este, Uruguay, where the eight regional platform for disaster risk reduction in Latin America and the Caribbean is being hosted. We expect to see leaders from across Latin America and the Caribbean participate in this three-day event, uh, which actually begins on Tuesday. So what's the importance of this, uh, having this platform? What's the importance of these meetings? Well, simply put, reducing risk reduces losses. And that's important to all of us. Alonso Torres is an international consultant on disaster risk management, climate science, and territorial development. Of recent, his work has been focused on Latin America and the Caribbean. He spoke with us about the importance of this week's event. We have made a significant advances in terms of early warning and, pre and preparedness and, and response, uh, which has been a, a have been a, a before and after uh, since 15 years ago. We, as a region, start to to. Uh, uh, bet on the importance of early warning systems because it's important for communities to know what to do when the hurricane or when the quake hits. Uh, we have to embrace that the, our countries are very dynamic in, in, dynamic in terms of the energy and the phenomena we, we, we face uh, meteorologically and, and, and seismically uh, speaking. But, Beyond that point, now we are seeing significant progress in terms of embed uh, some bits of disaster risk management from the more from, from a more pers uh, prospective way and approach into sectorial topics of the development agenda. For instance, in infrastructure resilience, uh, resilience of critical services. The Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction 2015 to 2030 provides concrete action plans to UN member countries for the protection of development gains from the risk of disasters. Risk or vulnerabilities are at the heart of disaster risk management. It is widely viewed that natural hazards are not the main culprits of the annual destruction. How humans interact with the ecosystems and how we build our infrastructures contribute to the vulnerabilities we pass on from generation to generation. In Belize City, for example, families that build their homes in water catchment areas are at greater risk in the event of a flood or hurricane. Also, the absence of resilient building codes only increase those risks. Notwithstanding the need to build better, one of the greatest threats to reducing disaster risk is corruption. It affects Everywhere is is a is a is a is a challenge that is spread across the region, and it's taking a increasingly is taking a, a, a more significant toll in terms of the resources and how we use public monies and revenues to put at the service of the of the of the society. Uh, we have been our progress has been hampered by corruption. And one a particular way in corruption affects the, 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 the performance of our public services is when you uh, look away, when you don't use the resources that you have at hand for make a good planning of the services and the use of the public resources to construct to build good infrastructure, good roads, good communication lines, things like that, are always eroded by corruption because if that, that leads to expand uh, less resources uh, in, in a strong infrastructure. Discussions at the Aid Regional Platform for Disaster Risk Management in Latin America and the Caribbean will focus not only on the exchange of experiences, but also on the use of science and technology for comprehensive management of disaster risk. The sad truth, according to Torres, is that without greater investment in technology, Latin America and the Caribbean will see little progress in the coming years. Sadly, Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, we have a very low investment rate in technology. And you can see around the world 
the differences between countries that invest and they trust in science and technology, for example, some countries in, in, in Asia Pacific, in contrast with what is happening in Latin America and the Caribbean with the budgets, the public budgets for science, innovation, technology are decreasing since the 80s. And if we don't, uh, if, if we don't demand to our stakeholders to invest more strongly in, in science and technology and innovation, uh, there had been a little room for improvement in the, in the coming years. Reporting from Punta del Este, Uruguay, for News 5, I am Paul Lopez.